In the last video, we talked about components as being objects that provide some sort of functionality. They live within bundles and they are declared components using an at component annotation. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the logistics of what happens when we declare a component, how does OSGI handle components, and what exactly is the framework that allows us to use that at component annotation. Let's start off with how does OSGI kind of know about all the components that are floating around? Uh, we have the service registry to think. What the service registry does is it provides a way for all of the components that are within the OSGI container to be published. The service registry is the one keeping track of all of our components. So what will happen is we can have a specific bundle or specific Java class request to use a specific component. What the service registry will do is take that request, look within the service registry itself, and then look for the component that's being requested and then hand off a reference of that component. So all of this is done with the service registry. It provides a very loose coupling between the implementation or the one requesting the component and the actual implementation itself. The service registry allows for us to have multiple components or multiple versions of a component floating around. So if we need multiple versions, the OSGI framework can handle that. It can hand, and the service registry can handle multiple versions of a component. We can also use uh, specific policies and filters to hone in or pick specific components. So again, in the example of having three versions, right, we can use specific policies or filters to say, I want version one, or I want version two, or maybe I want version three. So the service registry is keeping track of all of our components. It's grabbing requests for specific components and providing the reference or the implementation to the requester or the client. It can keep track of multiple versions and using policies or filters, we can then pick specific components if we need to. So here's an example here. So here in this diagram, let's start over at the service implementation. So the service implementation is the one who is going to be implementing the service API. And within the service implementation, it will have a component, right? The component is going to be implementing the interface over in the service API. So the service API will be exporting the package that contains the actual interface itself. Over here in the service implementation, it will then import the package being exported by the service API. And in turn, we can now use the interface within the service, impl uh, the service impl. Each one of these are bundles. So here within the service impl bundle, right, we're then going to create a Java class that implements the interface being imported. And then we're going to use the at component annotation to declare to the OSGI container and in turn to the OSGI service registry, hey, I have a component. The function of this component is going to be to implement this interface. So once we deploy the service impl bundle, the OSGI service registry will then recognize, hey, a component has been deployed. I'm going to register it here within myself and keep track of it. Over here on the client side, this client bundle is importing the package that's being exported by the service API. So the client is importing the interface and when it makes an API call or make a call to that interface, what it's effectively going to be doing behind the scenes is saying, hey, OSGI service registry, I have this interface. You have the implementation somewhere, I'm hoping. So go and look for it for me. So the service registry will see, hey, there's this component that's been registered. I see its functionality is to implement the specific interface. The client is asking for the implementation of that interface. I will give him or I'll give the client the component or a reference of the component. So this is what's going on here within this diagram. If it's a little bit fuzzy, that's okay. Once we hit the code example, it'll be much more clear. Now with the service registry in the previous video, we talked about how we can have uh, multiple versions. And I guess we talked about it here as well. So in this example, we see that there are multiple implementations of this service API, maybe version one, two, and three. 
each one of those components are being registered within the service registry. It's up to us as programmers at the client side to pick which component we want. So we can do something along the lines of, I have a specific filter that's going to be used to filter out the components I don't want, or I can use a policy and say, this is the specific component based off of an attribute that I do want, kind of up to us. And again, we'll see this in code. So what allows us to use the at component annotation we saw in the previous video, the, the mechanism that registers these components is a framework known as declarative services. The alternative to declarative services is another framework called Blueprint. It uses XML files to do all of the registering of our components. So rather than having to hammer away at XML files, declarative services takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting. All we need to do is use this at component annotation. Uh, if you have more uh, questions, feel free to Google around and take a look at declarative services and the documentation provided. There's a couple of different annotations that are very common. The two that I wanna highlight here is going to be the at component and the at reference. The at component annotation is what's used to register the component into the service registry. At reference is what's used to ask the service registry for a reference of a specific component. So we're gonna be seeing those two annotations a lot throughout the course of our exercises. So we could do a lot, of, a lot of stuff by hand if we wanted to, but one of the tools that's given to us is a tool called BND Tools. BND Tools is going to do two big things for us as we progress through our exercises. It's going to help us create the bundles and it's also going to uh, take care of some of the heavy lifting when we are dealing with our manifest file, right? BND Tools also does a slew of other things, but those are the two things that I wanna highlight. Help create the bundle, help with the manifest file that is required for our bundles. So a quick summary of this video as well as the previous one. An OSGI component is any Java class created inside a bundle that is declared to be a component, right? We use that at component annotation. A service is an OSGI component registered to the OSGI containers service registry. When we think about services in the OSGI world, they're typically going to be components that do something. Right? Declarative services, or DS for short, is a service that handles OSGI dependency injection and allows you to publish, find, and bind services based on XML metadata and annotations. We're going to be more focused on the annotations. So that wraps it up for components and services. In the next series of videos, right, we're gonna handle an exercise to further solidify this concept and this idea. So until then, I will see you in the next video.